actually revise orbit. So let's uh, go through the orbital anatomy. So the roof of the orbit is formed by lesser wing of sphenoid and the orbital plate of frontal bone. The lateral wall is formed by the greater wing of sphenoid and the zygomatic bone and it is the strongest wall of the orbit. The floor is formed by the zygomatic bone, the maxillary and the palatine bone and it is when the floor gives way during after any trauma, this is known as a blowout fracture. Uh, medially, there is presence of maxillary bone, there is lacrimal bone, there is perpendicular plate of ethmoid, the sphenoid and uh, the medial wall is the thinnest and is known as lamina papyracea. Okay, so thickest or the strongest is your lateral wall while the thinnest is your medial wall known as lamina papyracea. While when the floor gets involved, it is termed as blowout fracture. Now, between the greater and the lesser of wing of the sphenoid, there is a potential space or a fissure which is known as superior orbital fissure. Now, the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure can be remembered with the LFT and ANO. So, LFT stands for cranial nerve, frontal nerve and the trochlear nerve, while ANO is your abducens nerve, nasociliary nerve and your oculomotor nerve. So, these are the nerves that are flowing through your superior orbital or going through your superior orbital fissure. While the structure which is going to contribute or go through your optic canal here over here which is uh, basically encircled by the annulus of Zinn which is the tendinous sheath forming or joining all the rectine muscles. So, within this sheet, there is presence of uh, the opening known as optic canal and structures going or passing through the optic canal are your optic nerve and your ophthalmic artery. So, you need to know all these structures. Now, the fascia that covers the eyeball in toto is your uh, orbital fascia also known as your fascia bulbi or tenons capsule. It shows thickening inferiorly which is known as suspensory ligament of Lockwood. So, you need to know the term suspensory ligament of Lockwood or fascia bulbi. Now, coming on to the term which is proptosis. So, forward protrusion of the eyeball is termed as proptosis. If it is maintaining the visual axis or it is in the same axis as the visual axis, it is termed as axial and when it deviates from that, it is known as ab axial. It can be present in one eye when it is unilateral, it can be present in both the eyes when it is bilateral. Now, there are few conditions that can give an appearance of an outward protrusion but in reality, the eyes have not gone out. So, those conditions are known as pseudoproptosis. So, the conditions that can lead to pseudoproptosis or an appearance of proptosis known as pseudoproptosis can be facial asymmetry, high myopia or boof thalmos, lid retraction or enophthalmos of the other eye or the contralateral eye. So, these are the conditions that can cause pseudoproptosis. Exophthalmometry is the instrument or uh, is a mechanism through which we can measure the forward protrusion of the eye. So, normally the normal values are around 10 to 21 millimeter. Any difference mm -hmm. of more than 2 millimeters between the normal and the protruded eye or uh, when compared to the normal baseline would be termed significant and would define your proptosis. So, 2 mm you need to remember. Now, there can be various causes of unilateral proptosis, okay? like your congenital dermoid cyst, it can be acute onset status post trauma, it can be due to inflammation like your orbital cellulitis, cavernous sinus thrombosis, it can be due to vascular lesion like orbital varix, parasitic cyst, any tumors or any mucoceles of paranasal sinuses. But the most common cause of unilateral proptosis in adults would be thyroid ophthalmopathy while in children it is orbital cellulitis. While the most common cause for bilateral proptosis would be neuroblastoma and leukemia that is chloroma in children while again it is thyroid ophthalmopathy in adults. So, you need to remember the most common causes. So, most common cause for bilateral proptosis would be thyroid ophthalmopathy in adults and neuroblastoma and leukemia that is chloroma in children. Intermittent proptosis is seen in vascular tumors like or vital varics which shows an increased whenever there is increased venous pressure that is basically in cases of forward bending, coughing or any pressure on the jugular veins because of which the venous pressure rises and the size of the proptosis is going to increase since the size of the tumor is going to increase. Now, a pulsatile proptosis is seen due to any uh, connection that is happening between the veins and the arteries. So, the most important is your carotico cavernous fistula which 
uh, the characteristic feature of such kind of fistula is pulsations uh, that is going to show presence of brui and uh, whenever we touch we can feel the pulsations apart from keratico cavernous fistula other causes can that can cause pulsatile proptosis is your aneurysm of ophthalmic artery there can be transmission of the pulsation as can happen uh, in cases of deficient or vital roof and there is presence of meningoencephalocele or neurofibroma or any after post operation or trauma the pulsations can get transmitted uh, because the orbital roof is deficient so this is transmitted sort of cerebral pulsation so these are various reasons for pulsatile proptosis axial proptosis is generally seen whenever the tumor is within the muscular cone uh, or just behind your globe so uh, such a lesion will cause forward protrusion of uh, the eye ball in the along the visual axis and will lead to axial proptosis so these are generally your cavernous hemangioma or any optic nerve tumors also in cases of ophthalmopathy or thyroid exophthalmos okay abaxial proptosis is generally seen due to involvement of any structures within the walls of the orbit now there can be medial shifting uh, so presence of any medially located mass like your uh, mucosal or any tumors coming from ethmoidal sinus that is coming from the medial wall is going to push the eyeball laterally while your lacrimal gland which is placed laterally and superiorly over here when it gets enlarged it is going to push the eye medially and downwards so lacrimal gland tumor present on the, the lateral wall will push the eyeball medial and downwards superiorly located tumors that can be a superior located mass that are those coming from frontal sinus in the form of mucosal or any encephalocele or sphenoid sing meningioma or any orbital roof fracture can uh, lead to the because of the pressure the eyeball gets shifted downwards while any maxillary sinus involvement will cause shifting of the eye upwards so inferior uh, masses are generally coming from your maxillary sinus in the form of any mucosal or tumors the imaging modality of choice would be the first line of modality would be your ct scan okay uh, mri however remains the investigative modality of choice in cases of any orbitocranial junctional involvement or any optic nerve involvement so that for any optic nerve or any orbitocranial junctional abnormality can be detected best with your mri while for any vascular lesion mr angiography would be the investigative technique of choice for any masses the confirmatory diagnosis will be given by histopathological studies which can either be done by a fine needle aspiration biopsy where a needle is injected and a small chunk of the mass is taken out and sent for histopathology study or incisional biopsy where a small mass the structure is opened the tumor is opened and a small chunk is taken and sent for histopathological examination or an excisional biopsy where the entire encapsulated mass is taken out in total and then Then a histopathological study is done to come to a confirmatory diagnosis. Now, as against your proptosis, which is forward protrusion, the exact opposite of your proptosis is your enophthalmos, or where the eyeball has sunk into the orbit. So this is termed as enophthalmos. It can be the congenital, can be post trauma in cases of blowout fracture, or it can be post inflammatory due to cicatrization, or it can be secondary to Horner syndrome, or any cases of atrophy of the orbital contents post irradiation or senility can cause presence of enophthalmos